Sina caused for symptomatic hypercalcemia caused by AP2S1 mutations. Definition Hypercalcemia is too much calcium in the blood. It depends on the parotid hormone and vitamin D. Help manage calcium balance in the body. Primary hyperparathyroidism is the most common cause of hypercalcemia. It's due to excess of PTH released by the parotid glands. This excess occurs due to an enlargement of one or more of the parotid glands or a growth of on one of the glands. Hyperparathyroidism is a disease of the parathyroid glands affecting 1 in 800 people during their lifetime and 1 in 250 women over age 50. Since parathyroid glands control the levels of calcium in our bodies, hyperparathyroidism is a disease of improper calcium regulation. There are four parathyroid glands located behind the thyroid gland. Parathyroid glands monitor and control the amount of calcium in our blood and bones by secreting a hormone called parathyroid hormone or PTH. Each gland monitors the blood calcium and responds by making more or less PTH hormone. Hyperparathyroidism is a disease that occurs when one of the parathyroid glands develops a tumor. This tumor produces far too much parathyroid hormone, which is released into the bloodstream. The excess parathyroid hormone travels through the blood and into the bones. The hormone activates cells within the bones to eat away at the bones, often causing osteoporosis, fractures, and bone pain. The destruction of bone releases calcium into the blood. High blood calcium levels are seen in almost all patients with a parathyroid tumor. The excess calcium can build up in the arteries, increasing atherosclerosis throughout the body. This can lead to high blood pressure and increase risks for heart attack and stroke. The high calcium often affects the electrical system of the heart, causing atrial fibrillation and palpitations. The excess blood calcium builds up in the kidneys, forming kidney stones, and occasionally causing kidney failure. High cal Application in medicine. Familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia is a genetically heterogeneous disorder with three variants types 1, 2, and 3. Type 1 caused by calcium sensing resorbed mutations one, uh, and type 2 is caused by one in nucleotide binding protein subunit 8 11 type 3 which is the most severe variant clinically is caused by adapter related protein complex 2 sigma 1 subunit heterozygous mutation ap2s1 mutation cause an air arg 15 C -S Y S and R A R G 15 Liu substitutions and the mutant A P2 sigma proteins result in impaired calcium sensing resorbed mediated signal transduction. Sinacalcid hydrochloride, a naphthalene derivative and calcimimetic agent that increases the sensitivity of parathyroid gland calcium sensing receptors to serum calcium. This action reduces parathyroid hormone.
pros and cons. Sinacosin mediated allosteric modulation of the calcium sensing resort can correct the loss of function of AP2S1 mutations. In addition, in the short term, sinacosin can reduce the symptoms of familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia type 3 associated with all three AP2S1 mutations. Cons Adverse effects such as nausea, vomiting, and hypocalcemia did not develop in any of the approvement. However, long-term surveillance will be required to assess safety and monitor for hypocalcemia. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Hillel Sterling. Along with Ilya Glesserman, I authored the article entitled Hypercalcemia of Malignancy and new treatment options in the current issue of Therapeutics and Clinical Risk Management. Hypercalcemia of malignancy is quite common, affecting 20% of patients with cancer during the course of their disease. There are three mechanisms whereby malignancy causes hypercalcemia. The most common, affecting 80% of those with hypercalcemia, and often found in renal cell carcinoma as well as squamous cell carcinoma of any origin is parathyroid hormone-related protein, or PTHRP-related disease. PTHRP-related disease is due to the fact that PTHRP shares homology with PTH. As such, PTHRP activates the PTH receptor, which ultimately results in both increased bone resorption with the release of calcium, as well as increased calcium reclamation from the kidney. The second most common mechanism whereby malignancy and cancer results in hypercalcemia is due to direct metastatic invasion of bone. This occurs commonly in both breast cancer and occasionally in <clears throat> multiple, excuse me, often in multiple myeloma. In less than 1% of cases, hypercalcemia is mediated by 125 dihydroxyvitamin D. This is increased as the malignant cells recruit macrophages, which express 1-alpha-hydroxylase, which ultimately results in 1,25-dihydroxyvitamin D. Clinically, patients with hypercalcemia of malignancy often present with malaise, fatigue, lassitude, and with extreme elevations in calcium or rapid elevations in calcium frankencephalopathy. In terms of diagnosis of hypercalcemia of malignancy, there are several tests. Most importantly, PTHRP, PTH, and 1 and 125 dihydroxyvitamin D serum assays are indicated. In those with PTHRP related disease, PTHRP is of course elevated and PTH should be depressed. In those with metastatic disease, both PTH Issue applied in Ecuador. On reported case of familial hypocalcuric hypercalcemia type 3, each of three prevent had an AP2S1 mutation causing an ARG15C's ARG15His substitution. The improvements include a 34 year old woman who had a 12 year history of hypercalcemia. She presented with fatigue, headaches, and persistent generalized age that did not resolve up after parathyroid parathyroidectomy. A 22-year-old man presented by hypercalcemia, fatigue, and generalized rib pain, and a 52-year-old woman who had an approximately 20-year history of hypercalcemia presented with headaches, abdominal pain, vomiting, fatigue, and musculoskeletal pain that did not resolve after pamidronate infusion or parodic dictum. We are discussing today about small cell carcinoma of the ovary hypercalcemic type. It's a rare ovarian cancer with, uh, with fewer than 300 cases reported in the literature and represents less than 1% of ovarian 
cancers. This disease primarily affects young adults and pediatric patients with a mean age at diagnosis of 25. It's an aggressive form of ovarian cancer and most of, most of the patients are diagnosed with an advanced stage disease. Prognosis greatly depends on the stage. Uh, detection at an early stage is critical. The term small cell carcinoma uh, was designed because the small size of the tumor cells, although the tumor often contains large cells. It is important to point out that it differs markedly clinically and pathologically from a small cell carcinoma from other sites mostly common in their lungs. We know that this tumor also is associated with hypercalcemia in approximately two-thirds of the cases. And This is the second video in this series on calcium and phosphate disorders, and the specific topic is hypercalcemia. There are many clinical manifestations of hypercalcemia. Many medical students remember the symptoms from the saying, stones, bones, groans, and psychiatric overtones. So what do these terms refer? Stones refers to nephrolithiasis, bones is bone pain, groans is abdominal pain, and psychiatric overtones refers to any or all of depression, anxiety, and confusion. Other symptoms can include constipation, anorexia, nausea, weakness, and lethargy. When it comes to the physical exam, unfortunately, there are no reliable physical findings of hypercalcemia that are sensitive or specific enough to be useful in diagnosis. There are, however, some very interesting findings that can be seen on EKG. The classic finding is shown here. This is an example of an unusually short QT interval with a near absence of the ST segment, which lies between the QRS complex, or the sharp vertical spike, and the T wave which is the rounder and broader wave that comes afterwards. Although there are a few very rare etiologies of a short QT interval, hypercalcemia is the only etiology that is remotely common. Conclusion. Synalcalcet mediated allosteric modulation of the calcium sensing resort can correct the loss of function of AP2S1 mutations. In the short term, calcinal cancer can reduce the symptoms of familial hypocalciuric hypocalcemia type 3 associated with all three AP2S1 mutations. Hello, I'm Wendy St. Peter, and I've recently completed an evaluation of synacalcid initiation in hemodialysis patients. Um, other investigators and I used the DaVita data set, 45,000 patients, and we merged that data with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services to get a nice combined data set where we looked at the use of Sinecalcid. What we were interested in looking for was um, what were the predictors of Sinecalcid initiation? And what we found is that Sinecalcid was more likely to be initiated in patients that were African American, that were younger, that were women, and had longer duration on dialysis. And so those, those um, factors were interesting to us. We also found that um, African American patients were started on higher doses of Sinecalcid at initiation. And all those really have implications for the end-stage renal disease bundle that will go into effect in 2014. Because when the bundle goes into effect, phosphate binders and sinicalcid will be included in the bundle. And dialysis units that have higher proportions potentially of